Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day, and I hope you have a great Wednesday today. Hey, has anyone ever hurt you or a loved one so much that you wanted to take revenge? I, I mean, I'm guessing that there's been some point in your life where you desired revenge, dreamed about revenge, maybe even plotted revenge, maybe you took revenge. But all of us at some point want revenge on somebody who has hurt us in a significant way. Well, today in Genesis 34, we're looking at a story that is tragic and terrible. It's a story of sexual assault and revenge. So Dinah is one of Jacob's daughters, and, uh, and she is out about in the countryside. Uh, they're down in uh, the Israel area, the Promised Land area. And a guy named Shechem, who's a foreigner who lives there, is a prince of the land, he's wealthy. He sees her, he rapes her, and he wants to marry her. He wants her to be one of his wives. And, and so uh, he goes to the family and he says, hey, I want to marry your daughter. They're, they're angry because uh, they rape, that he raped her. And so he says, Shechem says, hey, ask me anything, anything at all for a bride price, and I'll pay it. And so uh, Jacob and some of his sons, her brothers, uh, they kind of, Jacob didn't come up with this plan, but the brothers did. They said, hey, dad, uh, ask them to be circumcised. Tell them that because you're not circumcised, you're not like us, but if you get circumcised, then we can, you know, exchange daughters and intermarry and, and be one tribe. And so Shechem and all of the men of his village uh, agreed to do this. Obviously Shechem had a lot of money and a lot of influence for the guys of his village to go ahead and agree to do this. But it was all part of the revenge plot because while the men were, shall we say, incapacitated, uh, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, came into the town with their men and slaughtered all the men. It was, it was mass killing. And, and then they took all the, of their wives and their children and their livestock and their stuff and took it as their own. So they exacted revenge for their sister's rape. Tragic story, what does that have to do with us? Well, the Apostle Paul in Romans 12 is very blunt and very direct because he says, do not take your own revenge, but leave room for the wrath of God, for vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the, that's the challenge for us. We see an example in this story today of, of the wrong way of acting out uh, in revenge. They didn't want justice, they wanted revenge. And yet God says, mercy is better than than revenge. The world says revenge is sweet. God says mercy is better. And you have to decide which way you're going to choose. Because if you choose the world's way, it's going to fill you with bitterness and anger because you're going to be holding on to that unforgiveness and you're just going to think about, think about, think about, obsess on how to take revenge. It will kill your soul. It will poison your heart. But if you practice forgiveness, God will cleanse your soul and set you free and then you'll be able to do what he said. Trust God for justice, and if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink, because in doing that, a beautiful thing happens. You heap burning coals on their head, and you overcome evil with good. You represent Jesus with grace, and men and women, boys and girls, are led to life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. But it's because we trust God, and we decide that we're not going to be a people of revenge, but instead we're going to be a people of mercy. I hope today that you choose mercy, because I know if you do, it will bless you. Have a great day. God bless Calvary.